Something most globe believers are shocked to learn is that so-called flat earthers like myself actually agree that the earth is not flat. The Oxford Dictionary defines flat when used as an adjective as being smooth and even, without marked lumps or indentations. The earth most certainly has lumps and indentations across its expanse in the form of hills, mountains, and valleys, peaks and troughs from the heights of Mount Everest to the depths of the Mariana Trench, and in that sense the world is definitely not flat. There is more than one definition of flat, however, and when used as an adverb, for example, the Oxford Dictionary defines flat as being in a horizontal position. When flat earthers call the earth flat, not a single one is denying the existence of hills, mountains, and valleys, but rather we are affirming the earth to be situated in a horizontal position, as a level plane and denying the existence of spherical curvature claimed by globe defenders. So the earth may not be perfectly flat, but one thing that always remains so are large bodies of water at rest. The earth is claimed to be approximately 71% covered in water, all of which is demonstrably horizontal and level. It is the natural physics of water and other liquids to remain flat when contained and undisturbed. This fundamental physical property of water is why it has been used by builders and engineers as a leveling tool for millennia. Whether in a bucket, a bathtub, a pool, pond, lake, or ocean, the surface of water at rest always remains horizontal and doesn't have the ability to show convexity or any shape whatsoever upon its surface. This fact is easily demonstrable and empirically verifiable, but completely at odds with what we are told about the globe. If Earth was truly a sphere, covered 71% in water, the oceans would have to be somehow curving around and sticking to all sides of a rapidly spinning ball suspended in space. In reality, it is simply impossible to make water behave this way, as anyone can experiment for themselves bodies of water will not stick to the underside of a ball, and cannot show convexity or any other shape upon their surface. Furthermore, while the entire Earth may not be flat, vast expanses ranging hundreds of miles from the Great Plains of America to the salt flats of Bolivia do not vary in elevation more than a few inches or a few feet over their entirety. For example, the Pampas of South America form a bare horizontal surface of nearly a thousand miles from the Andes to the Atlantic. The Llanos of the Orinoco form a plain of grass larger than the entire country of France, 250,000 square miles as flat as the surface of the sea. The area between the Carpathian and Ural Mountains also exhibits nearly a perfectly dead level scarcely rising at all over its 1,500 miles. In a 2003 experiment done by university geography professors using topographical geodetic surveys found that the state of Kansas in America was actually flatter than a pancake. Measuring with a confocal laser microscope, the flatness ratio of a pancake figured to 0.957 whereas the entire state of Kansas, covering 80,000 square miles, was determined to have an incredible flatness ratio of only 0 0.9997, making it literally flatter than a pancake. The Bolivian salt flats cover an area of 3,900 square miles, so flat that after rainfall, a thin layer of dead, calm water transforms it into the world's largest mirror, perfectly reflecting the sky over its entire expanse. In fact, every continent on Earth actually features plains several hundred miles in extent, so much so that the National Geographic Society claims more than one-third of the world's land areas are plains. This means that in addition to the 71% of Earth's landmass that is covered in flat, level water, Approximately another one-third 
of the remaining land areas are also flat and level, giving a grand total of over 80%. Therefore, the question globe believers should be asking themselves is if over 80% of the Earth is proven to be covered in flat plains and level water, how could it possibly be a sphere? And if over 80% of the Earth is empirically and demonstrably composed of flat lands and flat water, where is the sense and reason in assuming the remaining 20% to be globular? The remaining lands are composed of hills, mountains, and valleys, which are admittedly not flat, but with changes in elevation always in relation to sea level and a horizontal horizon. So the Earth may not be 100% flat, depending on which definition you're using, but it is certainly at least 80% covered in flat lands and flat water. And the remaining 20%, no matter how you try to squeeze and force-fit it into the heliocentric model, is impossible.